Today's video is going to be all about cyclical living and the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle lasts anywhere between 1 to 35-ish days. It's important to remember that everyone is different and so your cycle is going to look different than the next person. So for some people it's 1 to 28 days and for others it's 1 to 35 days. It's going to look different depending on who you are, how long you bleed for, how long you are fertile for, when your ovulation occurs. So the reason why I love cyclical living and understanding your life in correlation to your menstrual cycle is because it really helps you understand yourself on a deeper level. A lot of us have often felt like we are crazy, especially that time before your period where you might not understand why you feel a certain way, why you're crying, why you're angry, and then suddenly you get your period and it all makes sense. After your period, you also feel a range of different emotions from having a higher libido, having higher energy, then having energy dips again, and often this can be really confusing. And so that's why I love cyclical living, because it allows us to view our cycle as a four-phase process, and this relates to the seasons of nature. And these seasons mirror what we experience in our everyday life in accordance to our menstrual cycle. And so cyclical living is such an incredible tool to have in your tool belt because it helps you understand yourself on a deeper level to embrace your natural ebbs and flows and understand that they are completely normal. There is nothing wrong with you, you're not crazy. In fact, all of this has to do with hormones, but also cyclical living is about approaching the menstrual cycle from a super spiritual perspective. So while I love paying attention to the inner seasons and how each phase of the menstrual menstrual cycle relates to different hormones and how these hormones affect our energy levels and our libido and how we overall feel. What I love the most is how these inner seasons affect us on a deeply spiritual level. I love to view the menstrual cycle as a gateway to deeper spirituality. So in this video, I will touch on hormones, how this affects your energy and libido, but I'm also going to touch on the inner season and the menstrual cycle from a very spiritual perspective. So we're going to get a little bit of everything. I love working with the magic of the menstrual cycle because when we do this, we can understand that there is nothing wrong with us. In fact, the menstrual cycle is actually the gateway to our power and to our magic as bleeding beings. Let's dive into the inner seasons. We have inner winter, which is day one to day seven-ish of your bleed. We have inner spring, which is day seven to day 13-ish of your cycle. We then move into inner summer, which is your ovulatory phase, which is from day 14 to about day 21, day 22 of your cycle. We then move into inner autumn. This kind of marks the end of ovulation going into your luteal phase, which is about day 22 to 29-ish of your cycle. Like I said, all cycles last anywhere between day one to day 35-ish. That is typically what we understand as a normal cycle. Once you begin tracking your cycle, you can start to become a little bit more familiar with the days of your unique cycle. So let's dive into inner winter and what is available for us during this time. So like I said, inner winter is day one to day seven-ish of your cycle. This marks the first day you begin bleeding. So blood is going to be coming out, you are menstruating at this time. During inner winter, you'll probably start feeling quite low energy, lethargic, a little bit of fatigue, estrogen levels and progesterone levels begin to dip, and as a result, you start experiencing a dip in your energy. You might also experience a dip in your libido. All of this is completely normal. So inner winter is a time to come inward. It is a time to retreat. During this time, you have a heightened spiritual awareness. The veil is much thinner, and so you might have access to a lot more spiritual messages. This is a good time to be a little bit more introverted, don't be spending all your energy outside. You might be in bed, you might be in pain. And so this is a good time to retreat inwards and gather your emotional and spiritual strength. You've obviously gone through a lot of emotions. You begin bleeding and you start kind of realizing why. And I think an important thing to understand here is what gets loud when you get quiet. There is great medicine in retreating inwards 
gazing within and seeing what is potent, what is really showing its face during this time. And it's important to look at it. Inner winter is all about rest, being cozy, having an Epsom salt bath, really nurturing yourself. It's not about extending energy. And the archetype present here is the crone. And so the crone has a lot of wisdom and a lot of medicine. This is an incredibly important time to look at your life and start kind of thinking about your manifestations. You might create a manifestation list. It is such a potent time to get clear on what you want because you're taking time out of society, out of your everyday life to gaze within. So because of the way our world is structured, we don't go out and bleed like we used to way back in the day when we had the space to kind of honor our cycles. And so I understand that you might not have the time or the capacity or the space to to take an entire week out of your life. And so the importance of cyclical living is trying to find ways that we can fit these very spiritual and sacred practices into our modern world. And so you might not take a week off. Of course, that is not viable, but you could take an afternoon off. You could take a couple of hours at the end of the day to retreat inwards, gaze within, and tune into where your intuition is guiding you. Pay attention to what is coming up during your menstrual cycle. There is a lot of misconception that we say horrible things during our menstrual cycle and whatnot, but actually what's happening is you're really finding out who are pushing up against your boundaries and what boundaries need to be stated so that you can have more freedom in your life. And so pay attention to what is coming up during your cycle, but also honor and understand that it's just an ebb and flow. You might feel one way during your period and a completely other way at the next phase of your cycle and so it's also about honoring where you are as the veil is thinner between our world and the spirit world it's also important time to look at the messages of your spirit guides anyone that's trying to communicate with you take those messages into your life and see how you can implement them as your cycle continues so some of the spiritual practices that i would encourage during this time would be oracle cards, journaling, meditation, and then just to soothe yourself, have some Epsom salt baths. The magnesium really helps period pains. So inner winter as a whole is known as your follicular phase. We then move into the second phase of the cycle, which is inner spring. So now we start feeling a rise in energy, and this is as a result of the rise in estrogen levels. This also fits within your follicular phase. Follicular phase begins with day one of your cycle and ends with ovulation. So as we move into inner spring, we have a rise in energy. We also start experiencing a rise in libido. The archetype present during this phase is the maiden. This is a brilliant time for manifestation. Spring is an incredible time to plant your seed and then those seeds will be harvested in the summer. So inner spring is an incredible time to start planting those seeds. We're in the depth of the darkness, the cocoon. We're in the cocoon of menstruation. This is typically the darkness. We then begin to burst as a butterfly and we emerge and we kind of learn the lessons and we don't forget the lessons that we learned when we were in the darkness or in the shadow world. We take those lessons, we think about them and we kind of nurture them, but we also allow ourselves to move beyond them. And so the springtime is important to look at your dreams, look at your manifestations and now begin planting those seeds so that you can harvest them when you are ovulating, which is your summertime. So in a spring with the maiden archetype is a wonderful time time to start embracing this rise of energy. This is a time when you can start making plans with your friends and be a little bit more extroverted. You'll probably feel a lot more chatty and just have a bigger will for life. Often when you're bleeding, you don't have as much will for life. But then when you finish bleeding, you start feeling that rise in estrogen, which gives you a little bit of a high. And so you start feeling more ready to go out into the world and be seen. You might not feel like you want to be too seen, but you're still ready to emerge and just kind of be in that maiden energy. You will overall have a higher sense of vitality and you also start awakening your pleasure senses. These will become more heightened as you move into summer, but they already start creeping into your body 
body and you start feeling a lot more of a sense for desire. Maybe you have more of a sense for curiosity and so it's important to start embracing this and really start diving into your inner spring. So inner spring was day 7 to 13ish of your cycle. Like I said, it is also the follicular phase and the spiritual teachings during this time are intuition, paying attention to your intuition, paying attention to your manifestations, definitely write a manifestation list. You can also do some rituals like going into the garden and making a beautiful flower mandala, releasing all the darkness that came up during your period, and then also embrace what you would like to create moving forward as you go into inner summer. So as your libido starts to peak, we move into inner summer which is day 14 to about day 21-ish of your cycle. So this is your ovulatory phase. And this is an incredible time. This is when you are fertile. And this is really when you start feeling the height of your sexual desire, your ability to experience pleasure, as well as your energy. We in this time, your estrogen levels peak. And this is why you start feeling so much more energy and just start feeling a lot more libido in general and you start feeling so happy to be alive. You also now have a lot more energy for projects. You have a lot more energy to do things, to see friends, to work out. Overall, you're just like a bee in the garden, buzzing from plant to plant, just really feeling that heightened energy. This is a great time to do weight training, to go for hikes, to see your friends, to do late night activities because you have the energy to do so. On a spiritual level, this is also a really important time to now birth those projects. So the archetype present during summer is the mother and the mother is all about birthing your dreams, birthing manifestations, birthing projects. So you had the kind of epiphanies that went on when you took time in your shadow, in your cocoon. You started planting those seeds when you moved into spring. And then in summer, you now get to harvest. You actually have the energy to make your Instagram account look good. You have the energy to make TikToks, make reels. You have the energy to follow your intuition, to go on a road trip, to do all the things that you wanted to do when you didn't have as much energy. You also have the power to really listen to what's going on within you, really about using your energy in a way that supports your dreams, your intuition and your desires. This is also a wonderful time to connect with your lover if you have one. If you don't have a lover, it's an incredible time to have a sacred, spiritual, sensual practice, a self-pleasure practice because pleasure is something that you have from within you, not something you need someone else for. It is stuff that we have, it is something that we have within us and it is our birthright to experience this. So in a summer is just an incredible time to really go out there and seize the day, to have the energy to work on your projects. It's the mother archetype, so really just settle into that idea of birthing all that you want to create. This time is about action and action can be quite intimidating especially if you're in the day one to day seven of your cycle if you're in that inner winter you can't even bear the thought of action whereas now in your summer you have the energy to be active to take action on your dreams the spiritual medicine here is to also just embrace where you are to have your sensual spiritual practice this be with your partner or with yourself it's a time to make deeper connections with your friends it's really that kind of full moon energy and that's really what we're thinking of when we think of inner summer so then things come crashing down when we move on to inner autumn it doesn't necessarily come crashing down i'm being over dramatic but it's just important to understand this ebb and flow of your emotions so i'm sure a lot of us have experienced feeling crazy upset, angry, confused, crying on the floor because you don't know what your purpose is, you don't know who you are anymore, and then a couple days later your period arrives. So the culprit or what is responsible for that time before, so it's post-summer, now we move into autumn, this is known as your luteal phase, so that's after ovulation, you then begin having in autumn, which is day 22 to 29-ish of your cycle. This is when the inner critic is at an all-time high. Progesterone levels rise and you start experiencing a little bit of a dip in your energy. 
and you also might experience a little dip in your libido. This definitely varies. You might have a change in what you want if it's something more gentle, some more connective kind of experience with your partner or by yourself. So this is really going to vary depending on who you are and what you need. But typically your energy levels do begin to dip as progesterone rises at this stage. So luteal phase, inner autumn, inner critic is at an all-time high. This is the time when you start really questioning who you are. You might be crying about who you are. You are feeling lost. You don't know what your purpose is. You start questioning everything. You experience so much confusion. You also start experiencing a lot of insecurity, especially within yourself, within your relationship, with your friends, all kinds of things. Your inner critic is at an all-time high. Your inner mean girl is honestly being quite rude to you during this time, and you might find that you're crying. This is definitely the drama of crying on the floor and not knowing who you are. I've done this so many times and you always say like, what is wrong with me? What's going on? And then a couple days later you start bleeding and then you understand, well, inner autumn is this time which is full of confusion, full of self-doubt. So this is a perfect time to be very, very kind to yourself. This is the time to get super cozy, to spend time with a select few people. You don't wanna be doing anything that's gonna trigger you. You just wanna make sure you have a nice cocoon for yourself because you're gonna start going into that cocoon when you go into inner winter. So I love running baths for myself during this time, having a hot water bottle, watching some really feel good movies. You wanna be journaling. You wanna just be honoring yourself and honoring your time. And also when sensitivity starts arising, when insecurity starts arising, just remind yourself that you are so loved. So my favorite spiritual practice to do during this time is to write a list of all the things I love about myself, just to remind me that I actually am who I was when I was in summer and spring, and also just to kind of remember who I am and to not let those insecure thoughts get the best of me. So this is also a really great time to do some meditation, just to kind of care for yourself. Yoga Nidra is good, especially as your energy levels begin to dip. I also think this is a great time to do more Pilates, yoga-based practices, because that dip in energy might mean that you're not really in the space or in the mood to go and lift heavy weights or do a lot of things. So this is a great time to just do like more body weight exercises. Make yourself a cup of tea, go sit in the garden, really, really nurture yourself. So now that we know a little bit about each of the phases of our cycle, I just want to speak a little bit about cyclical living. Cyclical living is really about understanding that we are never going to be the same thing. People who bleed have an array of different emotions and there is such magic and potent medicine when we pay attention to the menstrual cycle and stop trying to fit ourselves into being exactly the same every single day of the month. But actually our magic lies in the fact that we're not going to be the same every single day of the month. Society kind of expects people who have a menstrual cycle, people who bleed, to fit into a box and to have the same kind of emotional stability that people who don't menstruate have. But the truth is that we're never going to be the same because we have these ebbs and flows with our hormones and as a result we experience different spiritual sensations that people who don't menstruate might not experience. And so there's actually great magic within this time. We don't have to fit into a box. We have different phases and we have different energies and it's important to honor that flow. It's important to kind of know yourself so that you also don't put pressure on yourself when you're feeling more introverted and don't want to see anyone. It also explains why sometimes you don't want to do crazy workouts, why sometimes you're more insecure than other times. It is all about your phases of your menstrual cycle. I also think that this offers us a gateway to the deep spirituality that we have within our womb space. And this might be an energetic womb or a physical womb, but there is deep medicine that lies within your womb space. And you can extract this deep medicine when you start paying attention to the different rhythms that you go by, as well as the different rituals that you can do at different phases of your menstrual cycle. There is so much medicine in our womb space and forming a relationship with my womb has been one of the most powerful things that I have ever done for myself. 
There are so many different practices you can do to form a relationship with your womb, like yoni steams. Yoni eggs is a great one that I use to actually heal my vaginismus. Journaling, ecstatic dance, cacao ceremonies. There are so many practices that I do on a regular basis that really help me form a magical relationship with my womb. And I honestly wouldn't give that up for anything. So I don't want to be the same every single day of the month. I love living in accordance to my cycle. Cyclical living is a beautiful practice because it also reminds us that we are not separate from nature. Whatever is happening in nature is literally mirrored within our own bodies and we can use that. There is a time for winter and rest. There is a time for summer to bask in the sun, to be out, to be external, to take action. There's a time to retreat inwards. There's a time when we're sensitive and insecure. There's a time when we're super confident. Nature teaches us so much and nature is mirrored within our very beings. And so it's important to take these practices to look to nature and really use her as an example of how we should live. This allows us to honor the ebb and flow, just like the moon waxes and wanes, so do we. Cyclical living also allows you to embody different archetypes. I shared some of the archetypes, but you can honestly take whichever ones resonate with you and use them. And if they don't resonate with you, find your own. So it's a deep spiritual practice. There's also different rituals and ceremonies that you can do at the different phases of your cycle. So it also allows you to live a very spiritually in tune life. It's also a way for you to have a really, really powerful manifestation practice, knowing that there's a time for you to plant those seeds. And then there's also going to be a time to take action. A lot of the manifestation process gets lost in the planting of seeds and then we don't always take action. But then we also don't always rest and know that there's a time to just stop and enjoy where we are or to even just be in the shadow aspects of where we are. That's also valid and that's also okay. So this practice is really about honoring the ebb and flow and just knowing that all of it is part of what makes us so magical and all of it is a gateway to divine healing and divine reclamation of your menstruation and your menstrual blood, which is actually an incredible practice. It is an incredible gift to be able to be in a world, to be in a body where we are bleeding beings. There is so much power and so much magic in having these cycles and so it's not something that you need to hate it's actually something that you can incorporate into your life and have a beautiful practice with and be in relationship to so this is my video on the inner seasons i really hope that you enjoyed it and i hope that you take something away that really resonates with you i also hope that you create a practice that serves you that you understand that it is so beautiful that you wax and wane that nature does it so so can we i really hope that you honor how beautiful and incredible you are and how amazing it is that you get to be in this body and do all of these things by the time you watch this video I probably would have published my book on Kindle all about cyclical living and so if you're interested in diving deeper into practices, journal prompts and all the rest then I really recommend you reading that book. If you would like to know where to find that book you can just pop a comment down below and I will send you a link. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are in the world I'm sending you so much love. Mm -hmm.